Hello there, I'm Ras Adibar Azzi and you're tuned in to 7 Edition. The headlines. Man beaten to death by two sons over property tussle. DAP's candidate set for a landslide victory in Sandakan by-election. We begin with this shocking story. A 56-year-old man was beaten to death by his two sons over an alleged property tussle at Taman Bercam Sinar in Ipoh Perak last Thursday. The victim succumbed to his injuries yesterday as he was receiving treatment at the Raja Permaisuri Bainun Hospital. Ipoh Deputy Police Chief Superintendent Mazuki Mat said the victim was rushed to the hospital by an ambulance after receiving an emergency call from his daughter. Checks showed there were wounds and bruises on the victim's head. The elder brother of the two suspects, who does not stay with the family, launched a police report against his two younger brothers, aged 20 and 21, after finding out that they had beaten their father until he fell unconscious in the 7 p.m. incident. The two suspects were remanded for seven days and the case has been classified as murder. A hostel warden who purportedly sodomized two students and molested three others at a Tafi school in Kanga Perlis was detained at midnight last night. The 28-year-old suspect was remanded for seven days to assist police investigation into the case. State Police Chief Datuk Nur Musha Muhammad said the warden was detained at a Tafis school in Kuala Kangsa. This follows a report launched by a staff at the school against the suspect on Thursday after two students alleged they were sodomized, while three others claimed they were molested by him. During preliminary investigation, the man also admitted to sodomizing, molesting and sexually harassed his victims aged from 9 to 15. The incidents were uncovered after one of the sodomy victims, aged 15, stepped forward to launch a complaint on April 24th. Police have busted a cigarette smuggling syndicate and seized contraband cigarettes worth nearly 2 million ringgit early yesterday. This after a team of marine police officers from Bukit Aman and Port Klang stopped, at lorry, stopped a lorry carrying 110,000 packets of cigarettes in Moa, Johor. Pemantauan dan surveillance di uh, kawasan Parit Sulong dan uh, telah mengekori sebuah uh, lori jenis uh, bonded dahatsu lima tan daripada Parit Sulong sehingga ke Bakri uh, Muah, Batu Tiga Bakri Muah. He also said the syndicate's Sudah. modus operandi was to smuggle in the contraband cigarettes from a neighbouring country via land routes. The 42-year-old driver has also been detained for smuggling untaxed goods. Police believe the syndicate was related to a recent case of contraband cigarette seizure in Johor Bahru recently. A drug addict suffered fractures on his hips and both legs after falling 15 metres from a two-storey shop lot in an attempt to flee from a police raid. Authorities later found drugs hidden in the 42-year-old man's anus after he was rushed to the Kuala Lumpur Hospital for treatment. The raid was conducted by the Dangwangi Narcotics Team at a premise in Jalan Chaukit upon receiving tip-offs on drug addiction activities in the area. The drugs found were believed to be heroin weighing 3.34 grams and uh, methamphetamine weighing 3.74 grams stored in two separate plastic packages. Police also found that the injured suspect has a uh, past criminal record related to drugs as well as other crimes. A woman and another man were also detained during the raid, during the raid and all three were remanded for four days to facilitate investigations under the Dangerous Drugs Act. The United States Department of Justice, DOJ, had charged former Fuji's rapper Prakarazel Pras Michel and fugitive businessman Lau Tech Joe, popular, uh, popularly known as Joe Lau, for conspiring to steer illegal foreign campaign funds into former U.S. President Barack Obama's 2012 re-election campaign. According to the unsealed indictment between June and November 2012, Lowe directed the transfer of approximately 21.6 million US dollars from foreign entities and accounts to Michelle to be funneled into the US presidential election while disguising.
dismissing it as legitimate campaign contributions. The indictment did not reveal the identity of the presidential candidate. However, Michelle, who is a U.S. citizen, was a well-known uh, avid supporter of the former president. Under federal election law, it is a crime for foreign nationals to make political contributions in U.S. federal, state or local polls. Meanwhile, a spokesperson for Lowe said the fugitive businessman has never made any campaign contributions directly or indirectly in the U.S. On to the Sandakan by-election, DAP's Vivian Wong is set for a landslide victory in the poll as the unofficial result is showing the candidate has obtained an unassailable lead. The win will enable Pakatan Harapan to break the duck after three consecutive losses in previous by-elections to Barisan Nasional. About 54% of voters cast their votes far below the 70% target set by the Election Commission. The Sandakan parliamentary by-election was called following the death of its incumbent MP Datuk Stephen Wong from the DAP on March 28. The poll saw a five-cornered fight involving Vivian, who is Datuk Stephen's daughter, as well as former Batu Sapi MP Datuk Linda Sen of Parti Bersatu Sabah, and three independent candidates Sulaiman Abdul Samad, Hamza Abdullah and Chia Suyung. The Sandakan by-election is the eighth to be called after the 14th general election in May last year. Meanwhile, police have opened six investigation papers from 12 reports which were received during the Sandakan by election campaign as of midnight yesterday. Sabah Police Commissioner Dato Omar Mama said these reports were launched by the candidates and parties contesting in the by election. Kita terima laporan pada jam 12.06 pagi tadi. Yeah. Okay, so dalam laporan tersebut menyatakan ada apa ni? Uh, pihak-pihak tertentu telah apa ni memberi wang kepada apa ni kepada pengundi yang dihormati other investigation papers involved poster and bunting mischief report as well as dissemination slander disseminating slander beg your pardon during the campaigning period for the Sandakan by election 362 talks and campaign permits were approved by the district police chief. Meanwhile, Sabah police had provided 874 personnel, namely involving 123 officers and 751 policemen for all types of tasks during the by-election. Swift action by the Mentakap Fire and Rescue Department in extinguishing a blast at a row of shop lots in the district this morning has uh, managed to save the business premises from being burnt down. Deputy Director of the Pahang Fire and Rescue Department, Muhammad Sani Harun, said the 7.30 a.m. fire started at a shop lot which sells and repairs six air, con uh, air conditioners at Jalan Bunga Tanjung. Seven firemen were deployed to the scene as soon as they received a distress call. No one was at the premise as business hours had not yet started when the fire broke out. Rescuers managed to extinguish the flames in 10 minutes, which prevented the fire from spreading to the other shop lots at the scene. The cause of the fire and the amount of losses incurred are still being investigated. The Selangor government will seek compensation from the developer of the Banting Taiping West Coast Expressway WCE project for the damages caused by the three main pipes which burst near the construction site that also resulted in water supply disruptions in Klang since last Saturday. Menteri Besar Amiruddin Shari said uh, the state government is currently evaluating the cost incurred as a result of the incident. Malamnya ada beberapa kemalangan kecil sebagaimana kenyataan air selalu yang menyebabkan berlaku semula kebocoran tersebut. Bila berlaku kebocoran tersebut, kita tak ada keupayaan selain membetulkan. Sekarang kerajaan negeri sedang membuat kebilayan dan kos yang telah kita tanggung dan kita bersedia untuk menuntut daripada pihak developer yang telah mengakibatkan kekalan ini terputus. He added that the water supply in 91.5% of the areas affected by the burst pipes have fully recovered. 
Ayer Selangor is currently working around the clock to carry out pipe repair works in areas that are still experiencing water supply disruptions and expects the problem to be fully resolved by tomorrow. It was reported that almost 800,000 consumers in 65 areas in Klang were affected by the incident. Coming up, 38 Malaysian esports athletes gear up for the SEA Games. Details next. Hello again. Tomorrow is a special day as we celebrate Mother's Day. On this day, the second Sunday of May every year, we honour the most special women in our lives and express our gratitude for their sacrifices and dedication to moulding us into who we are today. Now, to mark this special occasion, what better way to showcase our love to our mums by presenting them flowers? At the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KLA in Sepang, the KLM Royal Dutch Airlines brought about 5,000 fresh stalks of tulips from the Netherlands for its charity tulip sale in conjunction with Mother's Day. Saya difahamkan kan uh, kali terakhir uh, uh, acara tulip ni lah empat tahun lalu yang saya ang amat uh, gembira lah KLM uh, uh, bercadang untuk membawa semula tulip-tulip ke Malaysia dan permintaan seperti mana yang dilihat di crowd hari ini yang sangat-sangat menggalakkan uh, sangat appropriate lah sebab uh, tulip ni uh, bunga untuk kita meraihkan sempena dengan hari, hari ibu iaitu esok ya esok hari so i sendiri uh, have got quite a number of tulips that we distribute to all the mothers in my family my wife my mother in law uh, my own mother the charity sale kicked off this morning at KLIA's third floor where the public get to choose the freshly flown tulips from four colors yellow orange red and purple sold at 6 ringgit per stock all proceeds from the charity sale will be donated to Hospice Malaysia to support palliative care in the country. Tomorrow, MAHB and KLM will also distribute the tulips among passengers and staff who are mothers. Now let's head on over to our daily segment, Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. A giant billboard featuring the English abbreviation K thanks by installed on a pedestrian bridge in Malacca has been a hot topic for Malaysians recently, especially among the state's residents. After receiving backlash from netizens, the Malacca Historic City Council Mayor Mansur Sudin has ordered the infamous billboard to immediately be taken down. According to the Malay Mail, the mayor had reportedly said that the instruction was issued immediately after the billboard went viral on Facebook a few days ago. It was with the power of the internet, netizens had it their way as they voiced their displeasure over the improper use of the language. An unacceptable feat by the company to put forth slangs used by WeChat users. Malacca Chief Minister Adli Zahari said his party will review the applications for the state's billboards, especially those that use short forms. The signage by snack brand Mami features its mascot monster, which sometimes uses the abbreviated phrase in social media posts on Mami's accounts. The Ketang's Bai, seen on the signage, is a popular internet slang which is used as an abbreviation for OK, thank you, goodbye. As of today, the signage has been changed. It's time for our My Game On segment, bringing you the latest esports news in Malaysia. A total of 38 players have been shortlisted for Malaysia's first esports contingent to compete in the upcoming SEA Games to be hosted in the Philippines later this year. Six teams and eight individual players were selected during the grand finals of the Malaysian esports selections, followed by a boot camp which will form the final squad. One Izul Islam has the details. <laughs>
Welcome to my game on everyone and I'm currently here at Central ICT in Shah Alam Selangor where currently the Malaysian Esports Selection 2019 is underway. Now this is the final selection process for the upcoming SEA Games in the Philippines later this year. Now let's go find out who will represent our country at the upcoming SEA Games. The Malaysian Esports Selections saw athletes compete in three separate tournament divisions for a chance to represent Team Malaysia at the 2019 SEA Games. Beginning with state qualifiers, only the top players from each of the 14 states were chosen to compete in the national grand finals held at Central ICT in Shah Alam, Selangor. The selection process draws its curtains off the three months of nationwide competitions with the winners of the grand finals proceeding to an intensive boot camp to make the national team. Firstly, congratulations to all the teams and individuals that actually boosted forward to the Malaysia National Boot Camp that is going to happen in either July or August. Should be announced very, very soon. All the best of luck and inshallah, we look forward to actually bring back home at least a gold medal for Malaysia for the esports division out of the five game titles. Saya ucapkan uh, selamat maju jaya kepada atlet yang makan mewak yang telah menang ke peringkat kebangsaan dan akan ke peringkat uh, boot camp uh, di, uh, yang akan berlangsung kelak. Taniah kepada Zaba Zarif Aiman, taniah kepada M8 Hexa dan juga taniah kepada Ranger M8 Hexa yang telah melayakkan diri untuk mewakil Malaysia dan saya harap mereka semua akan membawa pulang emas bagi sukan-sukan dan kategori yang mereka wakil. The Malaysian Esports Boot Camp will be spearheaded by the National Sports Council together with Esports Malaysia and the Ministry of Youth and Sports. It will be the first step in gathering selected esports athletes, experts and industry players to formulate the best training regime for each esports title in the boot camp. Scheduled to begin in July, the boot camp is aimed at preparing Malaysian esports athletes physically and mentally for the upcoming SEA Games in the Philippines. I believe that most of the athletes that have been qualified, they have to be prepped, they have to be given the proper guideline, they have to have the proper regime of being a national athlete in comparison to other federations where they have been groomed, they have been trained and they have been given the guidelines, they have been experienced. Six medals will be contested in esports at the 2019 SEA Games, which is also set to feature a single esports demonstration event prior to the matches. Five of the six game titles confirmed for the biannual sporting event are Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Mobile Legends Bang Bang, Arena of Valor and Tekken 7. One is Islam for 7 edition. After first appearing in Detective Comics, Hashtag 27 on March 30th, 1939, Batman has become a symbol of determination, bravery and justice to generations of fans for 80 years. To help commemorate this milestone, Resorts World Gunting will host the first ever grand celebration in Southeast Asia to honour the world's greatest detective. Again, one Isul Islam has the story. grand celebration for the 80th anniversary of Batman is underway here at Resorts World Gunting for the first time ever in Southeast Asia. Fans of the Cape Crusader can come to the resort and enjoy many attractions including life-size replicas of the iconic hero as well as the Batmobile. Now let's go find out what the Dark Knight has to offer. Having influenced every area of modern entertainment, including comic books, cartoons, video games and blockbuster movies, The Dark Knight is now in Malaysia to give fans the opportunity to celebrate the character that has played a prominent role in mainstream culture. Working in conjunction with Warner Brothers Consumer Products and DC Entertainment, the resort has prepared various exciting activities and exhibitions spread throughout the Sky Avenue Mall. The first thing you could see is some exclusive comic collection presented by Han Lim of our Lim family. And you can see some of the best and oldest collection of Batman comics. We've designed a special Sky Symphony show. We've got meet and greets with Batman and also we've got a live show performance. So it will take you a whole day to enjoy everything. 
many other exciting elements to the Batman 80 years anniversary grand celebration will also be displayed throughout Sky Avenue. Fans can take photos with the life-size statues of Batman along with replicas of the Batmobile from both the 1989 Tim Burton directed film and 2016 Zack Snyder's Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. Children can also join in the fun with a mini Batmobile racing track while also meeting the Batman during the live shows and cosplay events. It's an honor um, to host the um, 80th, um, 80th um, Batman anniversary, in the first in Southeast Asia. And I would say that the um, Ginting, uh, Ginting Heinens has done a, a very good job in, uh, in, in this exhibition. Saya sebenarnya agak kagum dengan display yang ada hari ini. Dia boleh tengok figure-figure yang ada dan juga ada dua beg mobil hari ini. Life size. Saya agak kagum lah. I feel very happy and also very uh, grateful because uh, Genting is hosting this event and also good exposed to uh, uh, Batman fans in Malaysia. One is on Islam, seven edition. When we return, huge water spout spotted off Singapore coast. Don't touch that dial. We're back with news on a sighting in Singapore. A large tornado-like water spout was spotted off the country's shores on Saturday morning, sending residents in the central city in panic. Witnesses claimed that spout, uh, which was peak at the start, but became bigger as it neared land east after about 15 to 20 minutes. Photos and videos of the weather phenomenon, which occurred near Tanjung Paga Terminal, are currently going viral on WhatsApp and Facebook. The videos show ominous uh, dark skies and clouds in the background, with the water spout extending from the clouds to the sea. In another video footage, what looks like zinc sheets from nearby construction sites can be seen swirling in the skies as boats surrounding the spout sways. Another video shows the water spout together with huge sea waves heading towards land. Water spout, which is caused by intense thunderstorms, is formed when columns of water are sucked to the base of the clouds. The phenomenon has occurred several times before in Malaysia in many states, with the latest one spotted in Penang on April 1st this year. Four people died and 29 were injured, including 17 children, following a powerful explosion at a pyrotechnics factory in Colombia's capital, Bogota, on Friday. The explosion happened at midday in a factory that produces wicks for a local Andean game called Teo, in which metal discs are thrown at targets that contain gunpowder and explode on impact. It tore through two levels of the small brick building and also damaged several nearby cars and a preschool. At least 16 of the injured were minors and most of the injuries were caused by the shock wave from the blast. Investigators do not believe the incident is terror-related and are looking into a possible cause, including the callous use of gunpowder. Earlier reports suggested that the incident was caused by a gas canister blast. As the live-action adaptation of Disney's animation Aladdin is set to hit Malaysian theatres on May 24th, Disney Music has just released the remake of its spellbinding evergreen hit track, A Whole New World. Multi-platinum singer-songwriter Zayn Malik pairs up with emerging star Xavier Ward to take viewers wonder by wonder. We wrap up with the exclusive music video of the Magic Carpet Song. I'm Russ Adibarazi. Thanks for tuning in and good night. Assalamualaikum.